so that they can bear witness to Jesus in the culture no matter what circumstance they find themselves in. Pray, study, give spiritual direction. So read that, or just take the cliff notes right there that I gave you, and, and understand that that's what God has called pastors to do. In the early days of the church, as recorded in the book of Acts, there was, there was pressure for the, on the apostles to, to, to kind of get into the arena of activity directing. And it was an important activity early in the church. The question was, how are we going to take care of the widows? I mean, that's an important activity. You want your church to be on top of that thing. They came to the apostles and said, what are you going to do about this? And, and they prayed and they said, that's not our deal. And the church raised up other people to do that ministry. And the apostles said, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That's the role that you are calling this pastor to. And Scripture says that that decision pleased the entire church. So I say to you, love your pastor by freeing him to do what God has called him to do, to pray for you. And so if you come to stop by the office and, and somebody says, well, his door's closed, he's, he's probably praying, come back later. <laughs> Because that's what you called him to do. He's studying. Well, put the book down and talk. You, you honor that. Let him be that to pray and to study then so that he can give spiritual direction. Fifth, and I only have seven. I was going to stop at six, but I thought oh, I better go with seven because that's the lucky number for Christians. So <laughs> five, we're almost there. Hold on. Love your pastor by loving your church family the most. It's so perfectly clear in the scriptures the priority of God's people and what God is doing in the world. From the patriarch Abraham to the churches in the Revelation. So from beginning to end in the book, God's plan A has been a people called together, called out of the world. In fact, ecclesia means that, called out. A people called out, called together in their life together to give witness to this incredible Jesus who is the Savior. This family, community, life we share is plan A, that we love each other. And that love is not just a sentimental feeling, but it's the repeated acts of sacrificial, selfless love as we covenant together to make Jesus known. This is so much the plan of God that, that he gives each one of his children in Jesus a spiritual empowerment to be used in loving other people in the family. To each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And so we have been uh, commanded and equipped and empowered by Jesus to love and serve each other in our family of believers, sacrificially. Nobody's called to sit and watch. We're all called to love and serve sacrificially the family of God. When I said goodbye to the two churches that I pastored, both of them relieved that Cheryl was going to stay, by the way. Cheryl's a part of the village church in Baldwin. That's why you don't see her here. She's ministering there. That's our church home. Anyway, I got to get over that, that they loved her best, but if you knew her, you'd know why. Anyway, when I was saying goodbye to them, one of the scriptures that I shared when I said goodbye was this one. We were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become dear to us. And it was my way of saying in goodbye to these people that, that I tried to be all in, all there for them. I tried to hold nothing back. I was with them not just when we were inside the walls, but I was with them outside the walls doing life together. 
We cried together and we rejoiced together and we worked hard together. And they knew I was all in. Love your new pastor by letting him see that you are already all in with these people that he is going to come to love. Okay? Give him that gift when he shows up that he can see that you are holding nothing back from these people who are your family in the faith. These people that over time he is going to love and hold nothing back from. Let him see that from you up front as a gift of love. See how important these people are? They are my everything. Love your pastor by loving your church family most. Six, <laughs> love your pastor by letting him develop deep friendships that may not include you. There are a lot of, you know this, there are a lot of elements and dimensions to a really deep friendship. There's that weird chemistry thing that, you know, sometimes you just, it's like, ah, we got this thing, you know. There's shared life experience, shared interests, and all that stuff that causes some people to form deeper relationships than, than others. And, and we all know that, that not everyone is at the same level of friendship with everybody else. It's not normal. It's not natural. It doesn't happen. And your pastor and his wife are going to need friends here at Faith Community Church. And that closest of friendship for them here may not be you. And that's okay. And it should be okay with you. I've had closer friends in both of the churches that I've served closer than than others, it's natural. So, so don't, don't make a big deal out of that. And don't hold it against your pastor if, if for some reason God gives him something with someone else that he hasn't given you. I mean, he's still going to be your pastor. And he's going to love you, and he's going to do stuff with you, and you can share meals, and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff together, and you know, but you may just not be best friends. That's okay. I remember one time that Cheryl and I had gotten away for a weekend with a couple from our church that really were uh, our closest friends there and still are very close and dear to us. And upon our return, I was confronted by an angry church member. who We had been in their home, they had been in our home numerous times, and it's not like a complete stranger. This person confronted me and said, you are not supposed to have close friends in the congregation. And what they really meant was, other than me, and it about ruined that whole thing between us, that I would, Cheryl and I would have a weekend away with friends that weren't them. Remember the story of Jesus' transfiguration. It begins this way. After six days, Jesus took, them with, took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. That and other Bible references kind of give the impression that of the 12, there were this three, these three, who for whatever reason were kind of at a different level with Jesus. I mean, I don't want to make too much of that, but it's just, I'll just throw it out there. Looks like they got to spend a little bit more extra stuff with Jesus. And then there's this observation, believed to be about the Apostle John. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following him. The only disciple who gets that title, the one whom Jesus loved, is John. So what does he have going on? <laughs> He's at it some other level with Jesus. That can happen, and it's okay. So love your pastor by letting him develop deep friendships that may not include you. He's still going to love you. He's still going to be with you on so many different occasions and be in your home and you and his and do meals and all this kind of stuff, but you may not end up being besties, and that's okay. Okay? Okay. Seventh, and finally, we've been counting down for this. Love your pastor by letting him be the man 
God has created and gifted him to be. It's maybe the most obvious dumb thing I say today. Your new pastor will be different than any other pastor you've ever had. Duh! (laughs) He will be different. He'll be an entirely different person than any other pastor you've ever had. Some of you know that Mike Evans and I are close friends, and let me tell you, he is a different pastor than the man who served here for 20 years. If he was candidating today, you'd go, that's different. (laughs) He's different. It happens. People change and grow. and, And so I say this, don't add the burden of comparison to the burdens your new pastor will be carrying. Scripture says this, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. You can look at that closely and it doesn't say anything about idolizing your previous pastors and using them as a standard to measure the pastor that comes behind them. There's nothing in that text about that. It says remember them. What was good? Honor that. Imitate that. And, and what we need to do is, is understand that, that God was at work when Pastor Mike was here. That God was at work when Pastor Josh was here. And God will be at work <laughs> when the new pastor comes. He's going to be in it. And so we take what we learn from these pastors and we imitate their faith and we take what is good. God is going to be in this. He's not asleep at the wheel. God's not going to wake up 10 years from now and go, how did that guy end up in New Richmond? No. He's moving a person here. It's been in his plan for you since before time began. Now, that said, sometimes what God has in mind, you never saw coming. (laughs) Sometimes what God has in mind for the growth and and, and character building of his church, you won't like. (laughs) But Faith Community Church belongs to God. And he will use a variety of tools and a variety of people to deepen your faith in Him and your love for one another. That's the agenda. To deepen your faith in Him and your love for one another. The worst thing you could do, among the worst things you could do, let's say it that way, I don't want to limit your creativity, among the worst things you could do is to put your new pastor on kind of a preference probation. Well, I'm just going to see how he's working out before I... Eh, Wrong answer. (laughs) No. No. Because you know God's agenda. Faith in Him. Love for one another. This command is still the same regardless of the pastor. A new commandment I give to you, says Jesus, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That's the witness. And that is tested all the time in churches. Because churches are all about relationships. Will we love you? Like Jesus loves us. Will we love each other? Will we trust God to be enough for us that we could love each other no matter what, like Jesus loves us? That's the church. And it's so easy to forget it. 
I mean, and ask these old timers, David and Peter, they've been around a long time, me too. How many times does it seem like people forget that? And so easily split away. Church is always about Jesus and the mission of Jesus done in the love and power of Jesus. When we make it about any other person or personality type, we should reevaluate what we're doing. So love your pastor by letting him be the man God has created and gifted him to be and know that that's God's agenda, that your faith in him be deep, that you find your identity there in him and in the gospel and that you love each other like you have been loved by Jesus, that you'll die for these people. Some of them you don't even like that much, but they're your family in the faith, and you will love them. That's the, that's the witness. And so God's going to use this pastor. We don't know how, but that's the end game, that our faith be deepened and our love for each other be strengthened. So let me tell you, the fun is about to start. I don't know when. God's got it on the calendar. But the fun is about to start. You're going to have a new pastor, and that is going to be fun. Just fun. I'm telling you, it's going to be fun. God has a new pastor for you, and your new pastor will have a significant role to play in testing and deepening your obedience to Jesus' command to love each other in and as your witness to the world. So get ready. Prayerfully get ready. Let me review the seven points. Love your pastor by... Paying him enough. Love your pastor by treasuring him. Love your pastor by praying for him. Love your pastor by freeing him to do what God has called him to do. Love your pastor by loving your church family the most. Love your pastor by letting him develop deep friendships that may not include you. And love your pastor by letting him be the man God has created and gifted him to be. Love your pastor well. And breaking all homiletical rules. Rebuke like a mad mama she-bear anytime you hear someone gossip about him or his family. In love, put it down. Okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the men that you have placed in my life to teach me to shape me, to pastor me. I thank you for your design of the church, that you give us leaders. And we ask again, God, please, send us soon the man you have for us. That our witness would continue, continue to shine. But this 25 years is just the beginning. And the best days are coming. For your glory, for our joy, we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing. our home in life and death Christ alone Christ alone what is our only confidence that our souls to Him belong what holds our days within His hand what comes apart from His command and what will us to the end, the love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess. God 
Thanks for coming out to worship Jesus today at the Faith Community Church, a step on your spiritual journey. And I want to challenge you to consider what a next step might be for you. Uh, we've got some folks here. Pray, Martha's over here. We got anybody on this side today? So Martha, our prayer team is over here, and uh, Martha's willing to pray with you about anything that's going on in your life. So maybe that's the, the next step for you, to let somebody close enough to you to pray for you. So don't head out that way. Head over here. Martha would love to pray for you. If you're just checking out Faith Community Church, you could head out the door over to the right to the Connection Center, and uh, we've got a gift for you if you're brand new, and we'd love to have you fill out a connection card to let us know who you are and uh, ask all your questions out about there. Out there. Uh, next week, Kid Zone officially kicks off for the year, September 11th, Kid Zone, and and some of Kids Zone is going to happen over here in the D rooms this year. And so on Sunday mornings, that section is kind of be uh, off limits to the general public because of security reasons. All of our Kids Zone stuff is secure. And so um, got to use all the stuff on these bathrooms and all that. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. That begins next week. Also next week, the ministry fair. A chance for you to take a peek at all the ways that you could serve and love these people at Faith Community Church. And so come prepared to, to spend some time uh, checking out those opportunities. And then on September 18th, an RSVP event because of lunch. Uh, we're going to do a little church history about where did we come from. 25 years old this year, Faith Community Church, New Richmond. Where did, wh what? Where did we come from? And so I'll be leading that and... Uh, Make a reservation so you get lunch. If you don't make a reservation, you just get me no lunch. So that's the way that is. Most importantly, as we've sung about Jesus today, talked about him, uh, you know what's in your thinking. If you have him as your savior, your rescuer, and if you don't, and you know that and you want to talk about that, I would encourage you not to head out to that way, but 
head up to the front. You can talk to anybody you see up here about how you could begin a relationship with Jesus in which your sins are forgiven and you're reconciled to God forever. Let's pray. Father, again, all praise to you. We have life in you that will never end. Thank you for this people that we can enjoy life with you with. Thank you for this church. And Holy Spirit, fill us now with power and grace and love that we could represent you well this week for your glory, for our joy. Amen. Go in peace.